hands freely. Your Honor, please instruct the defendant that he cannot disrupt these proceedings with such outcomes. Give us a spring! If we are to have any semblance of all the Give us a Peace, unity, and welcome my conscious and unconscious family and friends. This is the all-new Black Village Community Podcast, and I am truly your host of the show, JC, a.k.a. Afro Black, dropping nothing but the raw and uncut. Without any fear, as I use my mic as a spear to chuckle chuckle you with liberated truth, I am your host and your native soldier in the struggle, my purpose and mission for this show is first to enlighten, inform, and engage. And I want to engage with all who claim to know the truth. All truth seekers and my native family, I welcome you. This show is dedicated to all our indigenous native ancestors and to all those who've carried the mantle of truth and to every person with the ability to throw off the chains of comfortable habit and unwarranted assumption and move in a new liberated direction that is guided by truth and observational evidence no matter where that direction may lead you my main objective and purpose here is freedom mind soul and spirit that being said Welcome to the Black Village Community Podcast and much love from our great universal goddess and mother of all living here and above. in the house. The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. A prison. For your mind. For your mind. For your mind. Did you know me? Did you know me? Did you know me? 
AKI for Black, and I am here with you for another delicious Black Sunday, dropping nothing but the raw and uncut here on the Black Village Community Podcast, and I am here with you for a delicious Black Sunday here in California, here where I'm at in Kayla, Cali. Boy, is it beautiful and rainy and chilly, but it's all gravy and potatoes, you feel me, because uh, I know I got somebody to keep me warm, and I keep her warm, and we keep each other warm, and right now she's chilly, and that's my queen, she here today with us, she didn't, wasn't with us last week, but she's joining us this week, queen, you want to holler at the community more sooner than later, hello my beautiful people, tell the people how you feel on this chilly California day, it is a beautiful day, but I blessed you with hope. Yeah, don't worry, you're going to be warm in a minute <laughs> But uh, today's podcast is a continuation of last week's podcast uh, Which is Amaridian Enslavement and the Plantation Negro Part 2 I wanted to continue this discussion Because it's a very important discussion on self-awareness and identity So on that note, let me slow down the pace a little bit with some uh, you know, excuse me, some of that, some of that Indian vibe music there. You know, J Bop. Let, let me slow it down with some J Bop. Yeah, there we go. I should slow this down a little bit with some J Bop. So I got J Bop in the backdrop there, and we shall continue this discussion. Last week, I was, you know, I was in the discussion, and my queen wasn't here, and I thought, you know, I like to share things like this with her as well. You know, because she has Native American heritage as well. And so, um, you know, also got some audio casts I want to play. Last week when I was um, when, we, when I was into this discussion on Amaridian enslavement and the plantation Negro, I played an audio cast uh, with um, uh, Lord Jamar, who uh, is who was a part of the group Brand Nubian in the early uh, in the early 90s. And uh, Lord Jamar is a very intelligent, conscious brother. You know, he can be very controversial as well. But at the same time, um, you know, he always tackle issues from a very intelligent perspective. And that's why I love the brother. You know, he's very straightforward. He's very raw and uncut. And so I, I just, you know, it, it surprised me when I found that audio cast queen of him talking about black folks being the original people here in America. And so um, I thought I started off, you know, I didn't, I'm not, I, you know, I just took a piece of it. I, you know, last week I paid, played uh, a, a, a longer part, um, a longer part of the interview. Uh, but I just took um, what I thought was the most important part of the interview, which is going to continue our discussion. So, you know, let me play this and uh, then we're going to continue to verberate on this subject matter of Amaridian enslavement and the plantation Negro. So let me play this with Brother Lord Jamar right quick. Now, what? Listen, listen. You go, you get here, right? Columbus and them motherfuckers get here. Mm -hmm. They got guns and all of that, so they fucking subdue, you know, the older generation or whatever. But the older generation is always going to fight and always going to hold on to their shit. Mm -hmm. So you go to the next generation now who doesn't know. We were talking about the disconnect before. Just in one generation from, from, you know what I mean? One generation motherfuckers don't know who Big Daddy Kane is. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So imagine you've got two, three, four, five, six generations. Even in just that one generation, if I separate you from your parent and tell you, you know, you're really from Africa. We stole you from Africa and brought you across the sea and brought you to this land that is not yours. So your land is actually somewhere else. O over there. Your land is actually somewhere o o over there. Your land is actually somewhere o o over there. Okay, Queen, you heard that. You heard that. What you know, I just uh, of course I echoed that because I thought it was important for people to pay attention that <clears throat> I mean look at the bigger picture. The white man has never apologized 
far over 400 years of enslavement to the black woman and the black man. He's never apologized, never. The government has never apologized for lying to black people, to our ancestors when he promised our people a portion of land. He, he's never even he's never paid reparations he's given reparations to the Japanese he's given reparation to, uh, to the white Native Americans I say white Native Americans and that's what people need to realize is that the white man has brought a divide a, seg- a segregated divide and he did this back in the 18th century created a created a a, 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 a segregated divide um, with dark Native Americans and light-skinned Native, Native Americans, just like he did with the light-skinned slave and the dark-skinned slave on the plantation. He did this with the original people. And this is something that the white devil has been doing since his existence on this planet, playing the game of divide and conquer. So why can't people comprehend the fact That the white devil has played a mental game. He's been playing mental games with people since his existence. Is that true, Queen? As far back as I have gone through the history books that he has been changing, altering, and um, coercing people into doing things their way. Coercing by using force. Wow. So, even by, by what you know, this white devil and his children today are playing the same game. They have not ended what their forefathers were doing. I mean, prime example. I mean, I, will, I mean, prior to us starting the show, I was sharing with you that I noticed that the laws, the the the, the, the laws of segregation that has the, that has everything to do with the plantation. I mean, excuse me, I said plantation. I meant reservation. <laughs> yeah, maybe that is purpose. Maybe that was an accident. I don't know. You tell me. But with the reservations the game that they played with the Native American to even have land, to keep his land, even though the the government has slowly taken more and more land and still taking more and more land from the light-skinned mixed or biracial mixed Native American who wants to claim that he's total, totally Native American but he doesn't even live by Native American standards by, and I'm saying when I say standards, what standards? I'm talking about the ancient standards that his ancestors lived under and lived by their own cultural standards the native american today the modern white i say white because they 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 embrace they they behave not all i'm talking about those if the shoe fit wear it you indian devil who are living by white white supremacist standards claiming that they're native american but they're living by white supremacist standards they're losing land government still taking land right now they're dealing with this pipeline situation you know because the cause government wants you know the republican party the conservatives wants to make more money off of oil you know they still hurting our planet they still messing up the ecosystem that's why i see the white devil don't belong here and uh they are uh, you know in the in the native these white native americans are fighting them you know and it's not the white it's not all just white native americans you got the black native americans and the brown native americans they all fighting the white devil to keep them from you know keep them from producing or constructing this pipeline but my point being is this is that they've allowed the system and they've never fought the system they've never fought the system to break down the the laws of segregation that the white man has set in place like the one drop rule or and you know this and the dogs rolls list these things should be destroyed why does the system still uphold these laws you what do you have to say about this queen money to be honest with you, I mean, the Dawes, rule, rule, um, Dawes Law thing was basically to make sure there were no dark-skinned Native Americans accepted into the tribes. And so in, in order for them to make sure they do, if they do this, then they would be able to accept government money grants and the quote-unquote protection of the land. And which was what ends to keep from furthering destruction of themselves to be continued uh, continually annihilated by the um, the white supremacists. They made these agreements. Well, you know, I, I, I want to um, um, promote the book that I've, I did it last last week. I'm, uh, you know, you can download the PDF file. The it's called the, the the title of this 
uh, ebook you can download. You can't go purchase it. I haven't found it anywhere at any bookstore. If it is, somebody please let me know or send me an email, mrblackbones at gmail.com. Of, um, the book is titled Making Indians White by Gregory Blavinsky. And um, <clears throat> he does a wonderful job giving you dates, names of, uh, of, uh, of white folks during the 17th and the 18th century that were creating these laws and that were developing um, an ideology, developing an assimilation of separating the light-skinned Native American and the the uh, the brown-skinned Native American. Um, you know, the, the basically the black man and the black woman who are actually indigenous to this country. Um, they were working on that way back then, and uh, uh, and and the white men devised this plan because for the purpose of keeping their slaves. Because back then they did not want their slave, even though they were they were they, they had set up ro- ro- laws and rules, starting in Virginia, and North and South Carolina, and these laws were making light skinned Native Americans deeming them under government or federal laws as white. And any Native American that was darker than light skin, that didn't have straight hair and light skin with a broad nose, if you was dark brown or copper color brown, even if you did have pretty hair, they deemed you black. And the whole purpose of this was because during the Yamasi Wars of 1715, um, the white man was tired of warring. They were trying to put together a united nation. They had just got done dealing with other internal issues and stuff, and and, and at the same time, still taking land from the Native American around uh, North America. But yet, they wanted to slow down the process and become a nation. So they deemed it by creating a treaty with light-skinned Native American and light-skinned and Native American tribes that they would. If, you know, they would make them white and they would not enslave their women and children anymore. If, you know, and, and, and that, but they had to agree with the fact that the only people that would be deemed not Native Americans would be those who were our dark, of darker complexion. That's a divide and conquer tactic. Would you agree, Queen? Yes, it would be, absolutely. And my, my, my issue with the whole thing when it comes to the light skinned Native American, those who are on the reservation today, the children of the grandparents and great grandparents that dates back to the 18th and 19th century, why are they carrying on these white supremacist uh, tactics and traditions? I don't even call them traditions, I rather call them tactics that they know that were created on prejudicial terms. By you know, prime example. I mean, I've, I'll never forget. I've read uh, in the news where they were trying to kick all the, um, the those who have the last name Freeman, who know their Native American heritage, know their Native American culture, know that they are connected with the reservation and those on the reservation. Those you know that their family ties that they are Native American, trying to kick them off the reservation. And so, my point in talking about this is the fact that we need to wake up, black people. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to not allow the system to dictate who we are. And that's what we we've been so much in that slave mentality practice that allow we don't question everything that the white man do. We don't question everything that he does, everything, every law that he makes, everything that he writes. We need to question these things, everything that he put in our face for us to accept, like the fact of telling us that we um, that he took our ancestors from across the oceans. When last week I pointed out and brought to the conscious community last week on my last week's podcast that they've only been according. I mean, researchers have already did it. I mean, you got I mean, you can go. I I challenge you go check out slave voyages dot org slave voyages dot org. And you will see right there. They tell you from 1626 to 1887, I believe only 304 304 thousand Africans were brought to North America that's a drop in the bucket in comparison to the hundreds of thousands and millions of Native Americans that were already here on plantations and I tried to also convey to the conscious community to think about the fact that do you really believe the plantation started in 1626 do you re- do you really believe? Have you really conceived in your mind and accepted 
what they presented to you in history books and told you on television that slavery didn't come here, didn't start. I mean, if you notice in the history books, the white man does not start slavery, even on movies like Roots, 12 Years a Slave and all the other movies they've done on slavery. They only start slavery in the 1600s. Well, actually, the late 1600s, because slavery was not legal until 1626. Why do they only start slavery in 1626? Why? Was there any plantations prior to 1626? Yes, there was many plantations in this country. And it was well over before the 1600s, going to the 1500s when the Spanish had colonized here first. And they were the first ones to start a plantation of tobacco cotton and and corn and other things they were shipping to spain enslaving the native americans to do the labor on the plantation because spaniards weren't spaniards weren't going to do a damn thing just like the white man was not going to do a damn thing on any farm or plantation you think they let all those native americans go on those plantations when they brought africans here in 1620 1626 of course not you're a fool if you think that and it's not documented anywhere that they ever did Native Americans were not free from the physical bonds until 1864 of the Emancipation Proclamation and the thing about it is that by 1864 before the advent of 1864 the white man had already been writing in laws calling those Native Americans Negroes blacks and colors and primarily back in the 1800s it was i mean if you read any documentation in the 18 to 1700s you're going to hear the term negro so many times you know and they just deemed all even the, even the africans they brought they deemed them all negroes under the term negro the thing about it though is this like i said they didn't bring enough africans here and i said this last week and i said it again they didn't bring enough africans here they didn't bring enough african men because they mostly brought african men 90 percent of the gender on those cargo ships were men and not only that the fact that a lot of things that people don't consider the first african cargo that was brought here in 18 i mean in uh, 1626 was only 20 africans that got off that cargo ship that's what I found funny, Queen. I mean, when you think about it, you know, black folks want to talk about, well, oh, they brought millions, you know, they brought millions of Africans here, and, and which is a lie. They, the word, they didn't even bring a million. <laughs> they didn't even bring a half a million. Half a million Africans didn't even come here. So, the thing about it, I mean, this was a nation that had over 500 Native American nations in this country at one time. Over 500 Native American nations, not tribes, nations, confederacies. So how are you going to compare that to 300,000 Africans that didn't even all make it here? Because many of those Africans were, di were, were died during the voyage or they were killed in the process because they refused to conform or they were killed just because they were African black folks need to wake the hell up so on that note queen i know you i mean you got some things we want to read i got an audio cast i got an audio cast i want to play i got an audio cast that i want to play of a brother named hammock and um he is the president of the naip and that means the naip stands for national association uh of uh, for the advancement of indigenous people and so um i got I, I want to. I got an article that I want to read on that, and I also got an audio cast from that brother that I think is very important for Black folks who are comfortable with the with the label and with the term African American without them really realizing on a political level they're hurting and disenfranchising themselves by accepting that title. Um, you feel me, Queen? You agree? What do you? Come on, anything you want to say? Don't let me take over the microphone, girl. You've been gone for a week. Say something to the community. Well, let's go ahead um, for the article in your uh, audio cast, and we'll go from there. Okay, but uh, yeah, the, the the article that I um, well before I play the audio cast, let me play. Let me read this right quick. The National Association for the Advancement of Indigenous People, okay, uh, in the region of Cherokee, North Carolina, United States began a research group studying the U.S. constitutional law 
law pertaining to indigenous people of America and uh, uh, and states began <clears throat> excuse me states as a research group study U.S. constitutional law pertaining to indigenous people of America and the international law it was founded by the NAAIP director and researcher Hammock Akan uh, Zuloup former judicial professional researcher and indigenous advocate United States recognized and unrecognized aborigin and Native American Native Americans with signatures foreign and domestic under the private tribal trust and an exclusive indigenous member only institution for the benefit of aboriginal people living under the colonized power of the United States government the NAAIP provides free information and advocacy let me get that right for uh, to thousands of fellow researchers and ancestry seekers native indigenous groups tribes and clans and nations across America the NAAIP researchers pull from more than 600 years of international and national archived history to reveal hidden truths about the true diverse culture and heritage of America's natives. natives. The NAAIP provides education in the areas of the U.S. law, American Indian law, and international law, and education on filing claims for the land and identity of reclaiming or reclamation of non um, of a uh, non uh, black American I guess US it says BIA I'm not sure what BIA but my point being is this is this is what this this brother hammock this is what he has done he's also uh, petitioned um, um, the the UN. the UN thank you Queen he petitioned the UN and was there sitting there spoke to representatives of the UN on behalf of black native americans all right our BIA which is black indigenous aborigines that's what that stands for okay i got that too i got so um this brother has done a lot of work okay he's done a lot of work he's still doing a lot of work and you know i would love to get in touch with the brother i would love to talk to the brother i'm gonna try to reach out to the brother and touch bases with him but i know he's a very busy man um but uh helping other indigenous people helping and i'm not talking about other indigenous people i'm talking about indigenous native americans of america he specifically worked in north america to bring um attention to the fact of who we are as a people and when I say who we are as a people, I'm talking about black people who have slave history or slave ancestral history in North America all the way up before America became a united country. So during the time of slavery, during the 17th and 16th century, during the 18th century, you know, by the 18th century it was a united, united country. But in the early 1800s, they were still putting things together and still trying to get things together. So this is what this brother does so i got an audio cast i want to play that i think is very important that speaks to um the mindset of black people who've embraced the system and yes saying i'm not a slave i'm not a slave yes you are you're a mental slave if you're not self-aware you're a mental slave if you don't care you're a mental slave if you pass that same mentality down to your children to just to plug themselves up into the matrix of this male dominated or male white dominated system and so on that note i want to play this audio cast and we shall continue from there how long have your people been here in america we don't if, know if your people were in america prior to the establishment of the united states then the united nations says that you are indigenous now see that's key because if you are indigenous, then you have international protections as an individual, as a group. If you are not indigenous, then you don't belong here, as Donald Trump says. <laughs> and, 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 and he's right. He's moving on what he already knows exists in policy. But the public doesn't know it exists in policy. The public is not aware that the sustainable development agenda and the claims against America put in place, put in motion the ability for the United States politicians to start removing African Americans and Mexican Americans from this country, which is what they've been trying to do since they came in. James Monroe 
and a few others with $16,000 purchased the lands called Liberia. And then they began shipping thousands of Negro Indians to Liberia to populate those lands of Liberia. So Liberia wasn't the, already populated? The people in Liberia know that they are from America. Hold on, what? I've met diplomats, ambassadors at the United Nations from Liberia, and they announced that they know that they are from America. They were shipped to America as immigrants, not IMM, but e-immigrants. One who shipped from his own home to another home. So there was massive immigration taking place in America in the 1700s, early 1800s, with Negroes being shipped wholesale out of this country. So if you're shipping Negroes out of this country, why are you shipping Negroes into this country? Well, the few that you did ship into this country were shipped in to assimilate the mindset, to convince the others who were 12 years a slave and stolen as children from various parts of the country to assimilate them into the belief that they came on these ships. This is what's been done. There were no ships, not the way that they put the ships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, were, there were less than 350,000 Africans that came to these lands. But they said it's like 1.7 million, though. It, it was in the millions. That's, history tells us. Books tell us. Historians tell us. They came over in the millions. They came over to where? They came to America. Which part of America? The Americas? Understand, during this period, there were no motors on ships. Think, use your common sense and look into the National Geographic and see what the, the current flow of the ocean is. It flows from the tip of, of, of Africa straight down into the Caribbean, bypassing the United States altogether. So you're saying millions were shipped to the Caribbean, then those millions were then shipped to the United States? No, no, it's, it's not in anybody's records. The records that re the, the records that exist reflect that Negroes were removed from these lands, not brought to these lands. So what does that mean today in 2016? In 2016, I'm, I'm, I don't know where you're going, but I'm going to I'm going to say this. In 2016, the Negro, the black man is is in terrible trouble. He's really in trouble. And we have institutions that exist to assist in getting these people out of trouble, but these institutions are not moving. The Moore Science Temple, for one, and I'm, and I'm blasting out this morning. There you go. You heard it right there. That's Hammock, the president uh, and founder of the NAAIP, which stands for National Association of Indigenous People. You feel me? And, uh, you know, I would encourage black folks, you know, I would encourage black folks that if you claim that you're not a slave, because just because you're not in physical bonds don't mean that you're not in mental bonds. You see, the white man wants to do his job as easy and as convenient as possible. What is the best way to have a slave if you can have a slave who don't even know they're a slave that's, that gives you the same work, activity, and productivity of a slave so you still financially benefit? That's the system we're living under. Everybody has to go to work. Everybody has to get paid. Everybody has, you have to pay your bills. But in the process of you paying your bills, in the process of making your ends meet, that's the only thing you're doing and you're barely doing that. And some people are struggling at doing that, making anything meet. So basically, you're never really progressing. You're just recycling. But wealthy people, and wealth is something that's inherited. Very few people build or create wealth. Wealth is something that's inherited. Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, that white devil who ran for president against House nigger Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, he inherited his wealth. This white devil who's running for president right now, Donald Trump, he inherited his wealth. His father gave him millions to start his own. His father gave him millions. Who do you know that's going to give you a million dollars? I don't, Queen. You know anybody who can give I us? I wish a, I did. Come on, you sure you don't know somebody in your family that can give <laughs> us a hundred thousand, a five hundred thousand? I don't know nobody that can give me a hundred thousand, a five hundred thousand. This man was given over a million dollars. According to him, it was a loan. Yeah, right. He never paid it back. <laughs> <laughs> so he he inherited. I mean, that tells you the type of family he came out of when he can inherit a million dollars to start his own business. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that the system wants to keep us enslaved in so many words. 
let me go on over here to this article I want to read again. You know, matter of fact, let me read this. I read this last week. I'm going to read it again. The definition of chattel slavery. Chattel slaves is an enslaved person who is owned forever. That means they never intended on letting black folks go. This is why I tell you that when they decided to create the divide between the light skin and the brown skin Native American, they made an agreement with them with them light skinned Native Americans. They sold us out. In my opinion, I'm gonna be honest with you, Ron I Cut. I think most of those light skinned natives sold us out. I think most of those light skinned Native Americans sold their brown skinned brother out. I would and, have to agree. And you know what? We got information. We got historical information. Even though we know that when those early explorers like Del Soto and and, and um, Hernando de Soto and Giovanni and and other uh, explorers who came to North America, they saw dark brown, copper color brown, and light skin brown Native Americans. And not all the Native American groups had the same commonality in the essence of looks. Some had long hair, some had short hair, some had curly hair, some had kinky hair, and some had straight hair. Is that true, Queen? Yeah, that is true. That's been the description of the natives that was encountered by the Europeans as they came to explore the new territories. So, obviously, some white, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, pale-faced, snow-white devil during the 17th century said, hmm, you know, we're tired of warring with these these savages, as they call our ancestors. They call our ancestors savages. I'm tired of, we're tired of warring with these savages. You know, we've lost a lot of good white blood. How can we end this war? How can we at least lessen the war and give us the advantage in the process? Hmm. Hey, our Greek ancestors have used the term divide and conquer. How about let's bring the division between them? Come on, man. That's simple. At the same time, that's very strategic. To bring a division between the group that was coming together warring against them. And they found some house Negro natives that was willing to do it. And those natives were the five civilized tribes. Those natives were the five civilized tribes. You and I went right there into that hole that right you were saying is civilized. Yeah, well, you know what? Let me also bring, and I, I said this before. I was, matter of fact, I was talking to a, an African conscious brother who I got much love and respect for. Uh, his name is Black Star. And I love the brother to join me on the show in a conversation, but for some reason, they want brothers won't join a brother on the show. I don't know why. You know, I don't know. I got my, I got my own thoughts why, but I ain't even go into that. That's gonna cause controversy. I got much respect for the brother. He's a good brother. But let me say this. Um, it's very, very, very much. I mean, what a lot of people don't know. What a lot of people don't know, and I shared this with the brother um, via, po- po- you know, posting back and forth, because he was at the brother asked me, you know, why you, you know, you, them brothers, them natives sold us out, man. I, I tried to explain the brother that, like, prime example, the Cherokee clan, the, the Cherokee, they split as a result of uh, one side of the group making a treaty with the white man. The group, the, the the Cherokee split. Many of the Cherokee left, and they still continue to be Cherokee, and kept the name black. You know, this is where the black Cherokees came in. That they was not going to make a make a treaty with the white man. Same thing with the Choctaw. Same thing with the um with the Seminole. They split. The group. Did, I mean, so so when the white man made a treaty, he made a treaty with the ones who were house Negro sellouts. That's who he made his agreement with, and he count. And those who did not join in, who split, they just act like they didn't exist. Same thing when white folks do today. Same thing white folks do today. When they, you know, when they want, when they, when they want to do something, and they don't want to, you know, they want to, they don't want any interference. They just ignore everybody. They act like you don't exist, and they continue to do what they're doing. You know. And, and they try to act, they try to make it seem like your voice don't matter, you know. And so that's a game that they play. See, but we as a people, we can't let their game drown us draw, drown us out. We cannot uh, not allow the characteristics characteristics of the white devil and the mental games that the white devil play. We cannot allow that to drown us out as a people. 
We got to seek truth, tell truth, expose lies for, for what they are, and share this information with our people. And so, on that note, I want to, you know, as I said, let me finish reading this article right quick. And um, it says, uh, as I said, chattel slaves is an enslaved person who is owned forever and whose children and children's children are automatically enslaved children's children so look what these white devils have done they got all black folks calling themselves african american the term did not become a coined t- term widely accepted and spread until the early 80s you would think something like this happened in the 70s and 60s but no during the 1950s, during the 1960s, black folks were still called Negroes. Black folks were still called black or colored. For the most part, they were called black in the, in the 70s and the 60s. Civil, and, and the black power movement had a whole lot to do with that because the black power movement embraced the term black. So, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, uh, you got people like uh, House Negro Jesse Jackson who became the front runner and poster boy for the term African American. So I got an article right here. I'm gonna give you a little history on how the term African American became a national political, uh, might I say, label for the black community. In a December 1988 news conference in Chicago's Hyatt Regency O'Hara Hotel, where leaders of 75 groups met to discuss a new national black agenda. Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson announced that members of their race preferred to be called African American. Now let me stop right there. And if you got anything you want to say, Queen, please say it because <laughs> women, 75 groups, not 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 not, not members, not persons. This Negro got together with 75 leaders, excuse me, 75 leaders of uh, 70, it says, says where leaders of 75 black groups met. So, I mean, to me, that sounds like a serious political agenda right there. Whenever you are able to get to everybody, I mean, like almost like a mafia, you know, the mafia game, you get all, get all the heads of, uh, of uh, you know, of all the guys all along the family, yeah all the family yeah get the heads of all the families together we're gonna meet at O'Hara O'Hara Hotel and uh, I got something I wanna talk to the family about sound like some mafia shit <laughs> I'm just gonna be wrong on cut that's what it sounds like to me this brother in 1980 news conference in Chicago's Hyatt Regency he didn't go to any hotel this, this he's like I said sound like some mafia stuff he met with them at the Hyatt Regency O'Hara Hotel where leaders of 75 black groups met to discuss a new national black agenda so it, it is some type of plot going on Jesse Jackson announced that members of their race who the hell how he gonna speak for the entire black race I mean for what about those who know that they're Native American don't want to be called African American what about for people who aren't even anywhere near the whole African American now have to file in America as African American what if they're from an island what if they're from um, Samoa and because he's dark skinned they do not now have to qualify as, as an African American well, the, the, look the thing I'm tripping off of is this he had his mind made up when he got to the conference he had an agenda already planned out. He already had his mind made up. He already knew what he's going to talk about. Obviously, these guys knew what he's going to talk about because why would you all come from all over the place to meet with Jesse Jackson, not knowing what he's going to talk about? So obviously, these house Negro elitists had already planned out, had already premeditated, had already devised what they were doing and why they were doing and why they were selling out the black populace. That's my that's the that's my you know my analyst of the whole situation. So let me continue on. It says Jesse Jackson announced that members of their race preferred to be called African American. The campaign he then led to replace the term black met immediate success among African American opinion makers and more gradual acceptance in the national press. Now, who are these opinion makers? 
who the hell are these opinion makers? Who, who, who are these opinion makers? African American, obviously, these are the black elitists. The house Negroes who sit at the feet of the white devil. Whatever the white devil tell that little monkey to say and do, that's what they go do. Because I'm wondering who the hell, somebody can tell me who the hell are these opinion makers who are making opinions for the black community. Let me continue on. Jesse Jack, Jackson's cultural offensive proposed an ethnic reference for a racial one, aiming thereby to help create a much as much as expressed a sense of ethnic identity among black Americans, which I don't agree with. How was he doing that? How are you going to name a group of black people after a continent when that continent, Africa, has a multiplicity of ethnic races within that country? Because black is not a race. Black is not an ethnic group. Black is a color. Black is a color. You bet not. You bet not. Look, Europe is a country with a number of white countries within well Europe is a continent with a number of white countries within it you bet not confuse the Portuguese with the Italian and the French with the English you better not confuse them even though they all European <laughs> Oh no, you're getting some fights over that one. Yeah, so black is, I mean, African American is not an ethnic group. It says that you're from the continent of Africa. It doesn't tell you from, if it doesn't tell you if you're Nigerian. No. Doesn't tell you if you are Zimbabwean. Doesn't tell you if you're Congolese or if you're Sudanese. It doesn't tell you who the hell you are and where, where, where you're from in Africa. African American doesn't is not an ethnic race. It's a it's an ideological construct that was oh, created two, for black people. Go ahead, Queen. Those are two different continents. You can't be from two different continents. You're from a region. You're from a place. You're from a people. Well, and that was the point of what Hammock, uh, brother Hammock, was pointing out, and, and that's what something I want to comment on as well. I'm wondering if Jesse Jackson knew that he was selling out his people to to white folks I wonder if Jesse Jackson had already known that black people are still in a system of slavery just not physical bonds and I'm wondering if he knew this and in the process of this he decided to sell his people out because by anybody claiming and accepting the idea and term of African American you really tightened the, the, the bonds the bonds of slavery on yourself politically you've tightened the bonds of slavery so now the white man can send your ass right back to Africa because you're African American. You're not. You're not American. You don't. This is not your country. Yeah. Now you can be deported, even though you've known nothing else other than this country. Your grandparents, your parents, your great grandparents have all been here, but because you're claiming African American, you can now be legally shipped out of the United States. Now, 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 the funny thing about this, though, how come this don't apply to the white devil? He don't, he's an immigrant. He was, he's not, he's not from, he, this is not his country. He took this country. No, because they only went to the UN to complain about the quote unquote black African Americans and the, and the, um, the immigrants from Mexico. As I say, the white devil. Yeah, exactly. Raw and, raw and uncut just like that let me continue reading about this crap that Jesse Jackson did okay it recalled now that let me let me go right back to the part where he says uh let me go right to the part where he says uh Jesse Jackson cultural offensive proposed an ethnic reference for a racial one re aiming thereby to help create as much as as express a sense of ethnic identity among black Americans it recalled the successful imposition of black over Negro 20 years earlier and renewed and renewed other um, other themes of the black power movement of the late 1960s which that's a total misreference to even to even make that reference in connection because in the 1960s the black power movement was meant not just to give black people a sense of unity dignity and self-respect most of all it was to strengthen the black community to rebel and to resist uh, white oppression, police brutality, political oppression, 
What the hell, African Af- that term African American don't do none of that. What the hell are they talking about? Wow, talking about, talking about, talking about putting icing on a nasty cake. <laughs> uh, name, let me finish reading. Uh, names can be more than tags, they can convey powerful imagery. So, naming, proposing, imposing, and accepting names can be a political exercise, and that's exactly what it is when you call yourself an American, an African American. It's a political exercise. And what kind of political exercise? It takes away your right to this country, it takes away your identity being aboriginal, being native to this country. It takes it away, it wipes it out by accepting that construct that they created the white devil and their porch monkeys created to call us African American yeah I'm calling Jesse Jackson a porch monkey because that's exactly what him and his elitist opinion makers are and were and still is they're porch monkeys to the white devil okay let me continue this uh all right now Okay, it says, uh, so naming, proposing, imposing, and accepting names can be a political exercise. And the call for blacks to be called African American was more than, than a manner of speaking. To be called an African American has cultural integrity. No, it don't. Jackson said. It puts us in our proper historical context. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You hear what this Negro said? He's accepted that, you know, he's accepted the whole construct of being African-American. Because, I mean, look, they created it. To him, it makes him feel better about him. But he's denying everybody else's rights in the prospect. That's what Obama did. He denied everyone else's right to put what they want as who they are. Our government should not define who we are ancestral. Well, exactly. I mean, that's and, I let, and to me, when you got the government still doing things like that, when you got the government still defining and redefining and classifying and reclassifying people by their own terms, that tells me that we're still under slavery. It means we still don't have the right to say exactly. who we are. Exactly. Because the only group of people who've never had a right to define themselves has and is aboriginal indigenous native peoples of america these are the people i mean you got people outside of america cuba the caribbean islands the virgin islands the canary islands the haitian islands they got more rights to define themselves than we do but as soon as we try to define ourselves all of a sudden all these political games and these political hoops and these political red tapes all of a sudden come into existence Mm. And then you got people, house Negroes and white devils telling you, oh, no, that's not who you are. How do you, you know, what proof you got? Where's your paperwork? All this crap. Well, well, do you know your DNA uh, uh, percentage and all this? All of a sudden, all this political crap come up when you when black people say, I am Native American. But when a white person says that they're Native American. They're not questioned. They're not questioned. Uh, well, how do you know this? So you got any paperwork to prove? You know, no questions. And if you look, if you light skin, or what they call the Hollywood look of the the Hollywood version of a Native American, there's no question. If you are if you are Mexican, really no question, because everybody knows the Mexicans have a connection to the Native American people. Mm-hmm. But because the white man has spent so many years, so much time, so much political uh, maneuvering, so many rewriting and covering up and omitting parts of history. To cover up who black Americans are, you got black Americans, white Americans, and everybody else in in other perspectives of, of other ethnic races that are denying black people their original identity, which is the fact that we are the children of the original aboriginal indigenous people of North America. So... I'm done. I mean, I could read more about what Jesse Jackson said, but I I can care less about what he say because uh, anybody who know anything about Jesse Jackson, if you don't, uh, I would encourage you to go read about his history, not just the good stuff, but the bad stuff, and you get a bigger picture of who that house nigga is. He is a house nigga sellout. Okay, so on that note, uh, you know, there was something else that I found uh, very important that I wanted to also play. Uh, it's it, Lord, Brother Lord Jamar again talking about the mind because um, slavery 
and especially modern day slavery in America. I'm not talking about what's being done in other countries, but modern day slavery in America is all mental. There's some physical with it because you get stuck in a system and become become a number, become a convict, become a number, become a statistic. Now you physically and mentally are enslaved because we anybody who has any education or at least anybody who has any knowledge of what's going on with young black people today, other than black people, you know, our young brothers and sisters uh, being killed by the police. And that's that that has everything to do with our true identity as Aboriginal indigenous people. Okay. Not has nothing to do with the term African has everything to do with who we are. These white devils know white people know more about us than we know about us. I'm going to say that again. White people know more about us than we know about us. And that's, that's the whole game that they play. They, they do that when it comes to military strategics. They do that when it comes to politics. They do that just a, on a general base. They do that in their community. They want to know more about what's going on outside their house. And they want less of what's inside their house coming outside their house. <laughs> so on that note, Lord Jamar talking about the mental. Now, when you listen to this audio cast, you're going to be like, what does that got to do? Because he's talking about the mindset. He's talking about the power of the mind. You feel me? The white devil has studied this. He is still studying the power of the mind. And so I'm going to play this audio cast and we shall continue because I, I got some information. I want to read some historical information. My queen pulled up, you know, like I said, there's a lot of explorers that people don't know about. A lot of explore that have touched, seen and wrote down what they saw when they encountered North America before the colonization of, of European English people coming over here, taking over, which the Europeans did not come over and take over until uh, 1586, 1587, when the Spanish exchanged and said, hey, y'all can have it. You know, we're just going to take a little bit, but you can have most of it. So let me, uh, we will be back in, after this audio cast. This mental shit. See, everything starts in the mind first. It's not because I brought my body somewhere that my body's going to start changing just because it's in the place. Well, your body doesn't necessarily start to change. My mind your starts offspring, to change. Your offspring. But it's the thinking that creates this. It's not just your offspring being in a certain place. Well, your offspring, you will have certain, you know, all your children look different, right? You have, what, two kids? Mm-hmm. Uh, your kids do not look identical, no, but they, they look similar. They look similar. Mm -hmm. But you have even two kids from the same set of parents will look different in certain ways. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so if you look at natural selection, if you look at Darwin and you look at all these types First of things. Well, we don't believe in natural selection. You don't believe Man, in that? Darwin is an asshole. Like he doesn't know <laughs> you what don't the fuck he's talking No. See, this is all white people putting their people at the pinnacle of science and acting like this is what it is. First of all, they're all theories. And even your man Einstein, um, the theory of relativity, mm -hmm. the, the Big Bang theory, yeah. the theory of natural selection, these are not facts. This is just what white people who have only been on this planet for about 6,000 years have theorized for what they have seen thus far. And what they've been able to understand. Well, when you look at animals, like, for example, when you look at giraffes, like, clearly a giraffe is built a certain type of way because its so it food get, source right. is at a certain height. So right, but guess what? The, the animal, the reason why over time it went, because the animal saw, okay, the food is up there. So it started thinking, how do I get to the food? Not just because it's there and the food is up there, so automatically it's going to be tall. The, 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 the animals started thinking, how do I get to the food? And the mind is what now transformed the body over time through needs. You see what I'm saying? So, so now, damn, if I only was, you know what I mean? That, now that thought goes into your DNA and it goes on to the next and the next and the next. And now you eventually get certain modification and that gets longer over time. And boom, now they're up there to be able to get the motherfucking whatever the fuck it is they eat up in them high ass trees. 
But we have to stop thinking that the physical is what comes first. The mental comes first. The mental is what makes everything. The mental is first. Knowledge, then wisdom, brings forth understanding. If you put physical before mental, you're going to get a misunderstanding. Whoa. Wow. You, you heard that, brother? He said, if you put <clears throat> physical before mental, you're you, going to get a misunderstanding. And that's what's been going on with black folks. Mm-hmm. We constantly are allowing the system to define who we are. And so then we just put it to action. We don't think for ourselves. We don't think for ourselves. We just accept it. You feel me? We work every, you know, black folks going to work every day. You know, I got to make that money. But again, they're not using their mind. Money is printed on cotton. Who used to pick cotton? Our ancestors. What the hell these white devils trying to tell us? (laughs) They don't use, black people don't use their mind. They don't question things. Who told me I'm African? Who, 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 who told me? Who told me my mama and my grandmama and my great-grandmama and my great-great-grandmama and that my original great-great-great-great-great-grandmama, who told me that she was African? How do I know this? I wasn't there during that time, so how do, how do I know this? Oh, because they, they told me this. They put it on the History Channel. They put it on the Discovery Channel. They put it in history books. They put it on television, magazines. They talking about it on TV and interviews. They got these so guys call themselves who call themselves scholars who are perpetuating it like House Negro Lewis Gates sold out Porch Monkey motherfucker. You know, this is why. And as a result, black people, uh, they just assimilate. They assimilate. And what was Lord Jamal saying? The mind. It's all about your mind. You so you think, so you are. Yep. As you think, and so as you accept what you think, so are you. You know, now you got these DNA things going around. You know, black folks, you know, you know <laughs> my DNA told me, you know, I'm 98% West African. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a family member who did the ancestry DNA test, and it told her that most of their ancestry is from some place in Africa. And yet, here we are with our whole family tree telling her she a Native American, but she's believing the DNA test over her own family tree. We'll see the thing about it again. People don't understand the politics of this. Chattel slavery was meant to keep the slaves enslaved, and their children's children, and their children's children. That's what that's what chattel slavery and chattel slavery was only practiced in North America. It was only practiced in North America. Other there were other forms of chattel slavery that was practiced in in Europe. I mean, even though it cracked me up how England always excluded itself from chattel slavery, as it you know, it's because the Queen ended it earlier than any other other countries did, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. You know, them black folks over there were in a form of chattel slavery, too. But it's just that chattel slavery remained in the U.S. And it still remains in the U.S. And most black folks don't even know it and don't accept it. And because they don't accept the fact that chattel slavery is still a part of this white devil system, Mm -hmm. which you don't acknowledge, you don't see. The white men play on that, too. The white man plays on the fact of what you don't know. Because now what you don't know, you dumbified too. You stupefied too. Because so now he can continue to be, to be the puppet master behind the scene. And you don't even realize he's pulling your strings like a monkey. <laughs> we got to wake up, people. We got to wake up, black people. So I want to read, go on, Queen, I mean, um, the Explorer. And I didn't get a chance to read this last week. Uh, last week, what I read was about um, the Spanish explorer, Hernando de Soto, who explored North America and colonized, you know, they cracked me up. They just want to call him an explorer, but he did more than explore. He literally colonized. uh, They're not explorers, but they're conquerors. They just, you know, sweetened it because, you know, they want to tell everybody that they just went in, uh, slaughtered a bunch of people and then told them, now you, you live under our rule. Yeah. Bottom line. But it's written down in history that he so-called explorer, but he did more than explore. He colonized uh, North America in from 1539 to 1543. Mm. Okay, um, and um, but he actually he was in North America longer than that because he actually literally created um, a colony uh, and and was exporting was exporting goods back to Spain. Um, um, I wonder to, what those goods were. 
tobacco, cotton. People. Yeah, what, what I found out was it said cotton. Crack me up. They want to ascribe cotton to African slaves. And they do this by saying that Africans in Africa were the first ones to produce cotton. That's a lie. <laughs> wow. White devil just won't stop lying. They got to keep up that front that everybody that's black is from Africa. Exactly. You know, um, also Francisco Carnado. He was another uh, explorer. Um, and he was just as vicious as Hernando de Soto, uh, having with over 300 soldiers, a thousand Indians for his glory. <laughs> he says for the glory of God. Wow. I'm saying, he colonized America from 1540 to 1542. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we want to read about another explorer and this explorer who, uh, which is go ahead and say his name. Cause I always get his last name. Not correctly. You, you're good at selling, saying people's <laughs> name, foreign names. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Giovanni de Verrazano. And he, uh, he wrote letters to King Francis the first. So he was an Italian. Oh no. Was he a, he was, either, no, fr- no fr- Italian or French, French, French explorer who, uh, did his explore explorations. But his, his letters he sent was in July 8th, 1524 reporting of his voyage of what they call the new world, which was North America. Go ahead and mm-hmm. read that queen, please. Well, I'm just took out a bit of pieces cause I wanted to point out that, um, when the first explorers came here, they did send letters back explaining to their kings and their queens what the people look like. Because we get told and we're taught and we're shown in movies and in histor- history that all of the natives here were light-skinned natives. And those were the only ones that mattered. On his travels and um, coming upon some people, he described them as that they are dark in color, not unlike the Ethiopians. With thick black hair, not very long, tied back behind the head like a small tail. He also describes how muscular they are, how tall they are, and their height and weight. But I wanted people to understand that he saw black people here before Africans were ever here. Yep, right here written. Those are dark, black, black skinned native, dark as the Ethiopians he described them as. And, and actually, when you read this uh, this letter that he wrote, it, he mentions it more than once. I'm, I'm noticing down here below. He also says again, as he continued his travels throughout North America, he came say again. He came into contact with some people. They are dark in color, like other tribes. Their skin is very glossy. Uh, they are medium height, and their faces are more clear cut. Like, Describing how a different each tribe may have in their physique, but there's another tribe that's dark in color. He, now, he doesn't say that they're as dark as the Ethiopians, but they were still dark. And, and, and I noticed that right here, another place, they, they, um, they're still, they're brown complected, but they, uh, but they are lighter brown. Well, he called these ones bronze. Yeah. Some were t- more towards whiteness and others were a tawny color, which is kind of like a light brown. What they call some of us mixed girls. Exactly. Basically, still showing. And when you go when, when you go into a black family, the ab, like my family, for instance. I mean, come on, my family. We got dark brown, mm-hmm. brown brown, and light brown, and even light light skin. My, I mean, my dad. My dad is so light. If he was any lighter, he'd be white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad was considered a, a, a light skinned man. His hair is his hair is brownish brownish red. You yeah. know. But my point being is that the fact is that black people are. The, our, our, we're one of the only groups, especially American, um, North American black people. I'm not talking about Africans. I'm not talking about the Caribbean black folks. I'm talking about North American ab, uh, black people who don't even know that they are connected to the indigenous aboriginal people of the past. We are the only people with a rainbow coalition of color of children and relatives and uncles and cousins and aunts. And as a result of the brainwashing, we question, we doubt our original identity which is the fact that we are the original native people of north america that we are the children of the uh, aboriginal indigenous people of north america making us native to this country this is more our country than it is the people who are running it most definitely well this is more our country this is our country more than these white devils and these porch monkey negroes who are calling themselves politicians (laughs) Raw and uncut like that here on the Black Village Community Podcast. So, on that note, we are getting very close for time, and you know we actually are over our time. But I want to, you know, I, I, like again, I wanted to uh, point out. I said the division, the division that the white devil played with the light-skinned Native American, who I personally, I said personally, 
and I'm going to do some research on it and back it up and probably do a podcast on it. I personally believe that the light-skinned Native American who are the heads of these um, tribal boards, who are the heads of these tribes on reservations, I personally believe that most of these Native Americans are more of white ancestry than the government and them are willing to admit. I personally think they are a hybrid race of Native American people. Okay, um, of course I'm got, I got an excerpt I want to read right quick from um, "Making Indians White" by Gregory Blavinsky, and I'm going to read this right quick. It says the prevalence of African Black slavery in North America was not inevitable. The fantastic prosperity of Spanish South America rested on forced Indian labor. <laughs> you see what I said? It rested on forced Indian labor. Although Spanish colonists employed labels other than slavery, for these practices after the crown abolished Indian enslavement in the 16th century, 75 consigned increasingly, excuse me, they are consigned to increasingly marginal economic importance aimed the ever expanding number of African slash black slaves enslaved natives blended into the plantations black community this presence created a mixed race culture that di that diverged from laws from laws neat racial categories these Indians descendants no longer represented a supposedly pure native culture but mainly but many of them retained a communal memor memory of their roots that would prove inevitable in their later suggest us uh, uh, struggle for freedom. Now, what I disagree with on, on, in this article is the fact that even you know, and but with, and it kind of when you read the when you read the book, when you read the book "Making Indians White," which he talks about dark-skinned Native Americans being called black, being called Negro, being called colored. And how the light-skinned Native American, which I'm, I'm going to probably put put that up, I'll read that at another time. Mm -hmm. um, the contradictory in the book is this: is that he turns around later on because during the 16th century they brought some Africans here. Now all of a sudden, all these dark Africans, I mean, all, excuse me, all these dark Native Americans are now called Africans. Are they called black? Okay, and then he says they're mixing. Well, natives natives mixing with native Indians. If you got light skinned Indian and a dark skinned Indian, why is the dark skinned Indian called an African or black? That does that didn't make sense to me. That and, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and you know, and not only that, I mean, as Hammock, the uh, the audio cast I played early, earlier, um, president uh, Hammock, who's the president of NWIP, um, talked about how the white man would ship out um, indigenous natives people as slaves they would ship them out and they would ship them out to so called put them in you know on other islands or ship them out to Europe as slaves but they would literally do a, a circle <clears throat> so they would go to these places and then do you know then go to the port of Africa and then come right back around and they would drop those same natives right back into America and by the time they got to America their identity was abolished their spirit was crushed so whatever the white man told them they were that's who they were so white man told them when they got to the port of virginia that they were africans they just accepted that whatever the white man because they didn't want to be killed they didn't want to be beat they didn't want to be tortured so you know it just it just really you know perturbs me might i put it in those type of words how the white man writes and when he writes books he still try you know even the white man who tells the truth that's why you got to question everything think about what you're reading when you read it how he'll say one thing and then say another um like here i mean i love this right here uh slavery and Na i read this too last week slavery and native americans in british north america and the united states now they say right here they say uh once europeans arrived as colonists in North America, the nature of Indian slavery changed abruptly and dramatically. That right there should be questioned. <clears throat> what did what what was the change? Because when the white colon when Europeans arrived and colonized, they didn't end Native Americans. Native American slavery did not end until the Emancipation Proclamation of 1864. 
in the early 18th century which is around 17 right here matter of fact is i'm sitting here i'm reading it right around here around 1715 it says right here it says um in 1715, in a profitable slave trade with the Caribbean, Spanish, Hispaniola, and northern colonies, because of the higher transportation costs of bringing blacks from, from Africa, whites in northern colonies sometimes preferred Indian slaves, especially Indian women and children, to blacks. Carolina actually exported as many or even more Indian slaves than it imported. My point being is this. If they continued to work in Indian slavery, if they continued to keep Indians enslaved because they preferred Indians as slaves over Africans, what was the change that abruptly and dramatically happened? Well, I, I'm, I can tell you what I suspect it was. It was this right here. Let us make a slave by Willie Lynch. That mental indoctrination of assimilation. To keep the black woman and black man to keep that mental enslavement cycle going so that there would not be a fight, would not be a fuss, would not be any resistance, would not be any deaths and killings of any more white people. But we got these Negroes right where we want them to be at. And it's still going on today through the ideology of the African-American label and construct. Would you agree, Queen? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to end it on that note. <laughs> you know, I still got the Willie Lynch letters sitting right here too. I mean, I'm itching to read some of the Willie Lynch letters, and you know, I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, I got an article right here called "Indian Slavery in Colonial America." That's straight. I mean, this is the raw and uncut. Let me just read this. British colonists largely constructed their own Indian policies, including those concerning labor. In both instances, the Spanish and the French, I mean, excuse me, the Spanish and the British colonists and local official, officials largely succeeded as instituting economic systems from which they profited greatly by indigenous labor. People go get this. Go download. It's called Indian Slavery in Colonial America. Go get it. You can download it yourself. PDF file. Read it on your tablet. Read it on your phone. Go get it. You feel me? Stop being a slave to the system. Research. Research. Use your brain for more than just making money and taking care of your family. And, and you know, black folks love to have sex and watch, okay. movie, and, and watch movies. I love to have sex, too. But use your brain. Fill yourself with some education. Educate yourself. You ain't got to be a, go to the university to educate yourself. You can educate yourself right at home. Actually, you get better education researching yourself. Buying, book, buying your own books, going to the library yourself, going on the internet yourself. Re you do you do better researching yourself than, than these white indoctrinated schools of education that's only perpetuating the same crap. So, on that note, we gotta go. Time is short. I appreciate everybody who listens to the show. You can always join us. I will always say this and continue to say this just in case somebody want to join us here at the Black Village Community Podcast. It doesn't cost you a dime, just a bit of your conscious time. You can join us at 855-445-9340. You can also join us at 857-232-0155. And don't forget the conference key to get through the conference door, which is 947595. And also, please um, stop by our online web store, which is Mystic Roots dot your african market dot com again that is mystic roots m y s t i k r o o t z dot com excuse me dot your african market dot com so please check out mystic roots got all your exotic gifts from the motherland and you know just because i embrace my native identity i still love my african people my african sisters and brothers we are one race one people on this planet it's only politics and racism that keeps us segregated and separated you feel me and uh if you do any research you'll find out that the african and the native american uh have a long history of relationships doing business cohabitating and intermarrying so you know i'm not I'm, I'm i don't perpetuate racism i perpetuate truth so on that note queen you got any last words to say before we head out of here well my dear you seem to have said that i as always do just to to educate yourself I'd like to add to stay united to be one to be free 
Wow, I like that. She said, we got to stay, we got to stay united. We got to be as one. We got to be free. And that is the truth. You know, feel me? We got to stop letting politics separate us. We got to stop letting uh, religion separate us. We got to stop allowing the streets Letting the streets When I say the streets I'm talking about brothers out there gang banging And selling drugs And making money off of women We gotta stop doing that We gotta stop hurting ourselves people So on that note I gotta go I will always be back Be black Every black Sunday Dropping nothing but the raw nut cut Here on the Black Village Community Podcast And on that note I gotta go I hope you guys join me next week As I will continue another delicious black topic With the conscious community So as I always say May the great mother bring us together In the love of her wings Under her In her And uh, you know as always you know, I love chicken so love peace and chicken grease I gotta go peace I'm out no matter where you go in every country we in there most of us did not come on slave ships we've been here indian just means amalgamated more the u.s tried to wipe us out in three seminal wars for each aboriginal seven troops died 90 percent of indians were reclassified as negroes we fought european foes africa's great but we don't look under our nose or now here's the old man river or the mossy seagull knock out the mississippi we're the yamasi people in others here like the washita the chocos in colombia daddy and in panama the gotti phone out the more we're prisoners of war our titles nationalities and birthrights ignored we got a huge missing gap in our past and been divided into race of some type of caste everyone else has a language where's mine because ours is long gone like your grandpa's hairline Virginia people, 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 people,